what happens when you film comedy sketches about agency life on your phone and publish them on social media. You get over 25,000 followers on LinkedIn in just a matter of months, and over 100,000 followers on TikTok. Rob Mayhew is a stand-up comedian who has been in the agency world for 20 years, and his comedy sketches about agency life have taken TikTok and LinkedIn by storm. He really is the comedy king of LinkedIn right now. From the trials and tribulations of pitching to office culture and everything in between, Rob's videos reach thousands of people every single day. In episode 47, you get to listen in on how Rob manages to light up LinkedIn for so many people and how it's become an effective marketing platform for himself. If you like what you hear, then share, subscribe and leave a review. Your support really does mean a lot. Let's get on with the chat. Hi uh, Rob, how are you doing? Very well. Uh, very excited to see you and hear you. Um, the, sun, Friday. the sun is shining. It's a Friday. I'm very excited. It's the more. It's, oh, it's just, just after lunch now, um, and so it's but it's nice to speak to you and to talk to you on this lovely day. If it was um, normal times in in the agency world, it would be, wouldn't it be what like? It's been so time, now, beers for the whole whole of the afternoon. I'll tell you what would have happened though, because it was nice yesterday. So people would have gone out for drinks on a Thursday. That's true. Uh, yeah. And today there'd be hungover people. There'd be some lunches, but you know everyone would be wrestling with deadlines. Yeah. One thing is, I just on a side note, uh, people that set Friday deadlines are well, evil. They are. <laughs> it's a special place in, in but make it place. thursday like i don't mind take a day off but don't make it friday because it's just you know anyway that's, that's me true. digressing so that yeah thanks for thanks for getting on the pod it's um yeah it's great to have you have you in, in for the chat i've uh, been um i can't can't remember how long i've been, been like, a while. On, on linkedin it's been a while but it's um yeah every every time i i see your your agency life sketches drop into my feed. Um, like with lots of people, it, it definitely makes me giggle <laughs> a lot, and it's it's bang on. So let's let's just start off with just a bit of an intro for for those people who don't don't know you, Rob. So hello everyone. My name is Rob Mayhew, um, and I uh, have been in the I want to call it marketing communications industry because it does vary. Where because mm. I started off, I've been in it for like twenty years now. Started off. Um, as an account exec in sort of a below the line agency that, that you know then went into sort of through the line agencies and became a shopper marketing expert then became a, a social media digital uh, expert working at a pr agency then worked at gray some of the big agencies mm. then went client side in the last sort of 10 years doesn't that doesn't seem that seems too long maybe last eight years social media and influencer head of now so i'm working at an amazing PR agency called Fleischmann Hillard, who are, and I'm head of influence there, head of sort of influence and kind of social content as well. Um, mm. And that's kind of the professional side of me. So I'm working four days a week. You'll be happy to know, Chris, doing mm. that. Um, <laughs> and then I have also, for the last seven or eight years, have been doing stand up comedy. Okay. And then when lockdown happened, I decided I wanted to know more about TikTok. So I started posting sort of different things, trying to try and different stand up routines, maybe some funny observations. Uh, and it took me about three or four months. And I, you know, you, I'm getting sort of like maybe 100, 200 views. Mm. And then after I was posting about eight times a day, because I was freelancing then. So I had a lot of time off. Um, <laughs> and then um, I just stumbled across to I, I did a meeting room sketch where I'm you wait you know when you go to a meeting room and there's someone in there and you're kind of like have we booked it you know go and get the person if you had to throw them out like who yeah. have they taken our teas and coffees just really observational relatable content a sketch and then I posted it and it kind of got thousands of views and I thought oh I could make I could make a lot of these because I've worked in an in you know at the time it was workplace sketches so i you know i've, I've had a job worked in an office for 15 20 years mm. so um i started doing that and then probably about a year ago uh i started doing more agency sketches so being a bit more niche and leaning into kind of my experience because pretty much some of the well pretty much all of the things that we do in this job 
are hilarious uh, to anyone outside or even if you just stand back and you look at like the how we behave around a pitch how we are when a client comes to the office what we do when we show present creative work um all these sort of behaviors are, are just funny they're funny to me yeah. and um i just think you know if i throw a couple of jokes in there they can I, be even funnier so i i, I, I literally could spend all day every day doing sketches I've got so many ideas I never run out of ideas because I have uh, all this experience of working as agencies and you know it's I've got it's just I just it comes very easy to me because as a comedian as a comedy writer um, I love writing as well and just finding the perfect sketch and the science of all of that and so I've grown I've grown a TikTok audience with, as of today uh, is a hundred thousand followers that's awesome. So, that's thank congrats. you very much. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's 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 a, I know it's just a vanity number, but it kind of it was always a goal to get to a hundred thousand, mm. um, and it's it's just exciting to do it. And yeah. you know, I woke up with a hundred thousand, and the day was exactly like it was yesterday. <laughs> Nothing had changed. <laughs> Nothing changed. Yeah. And if, <laughs> you've um, have you found, you must have found that with TikTok, obviously, kind of was it kind of that. The democratic algorithm whatever you want to say is that yeah it's your content is flying even before it's got to the tens of thousands of, of, of followers yeah I, I think what was the key for me is um i had something to say so being a bit older i mean tiktok's not as young as people think it is just you no, know it's, it's, it's a lot older um a lot of the content creators are younger but the people that consume it are a bit older so yeah. but i think i've got something to say so i've got you know people like to know what it's like to work in an agency it's just relatable content um and then so i just started building my audience just within tiktok and then a few months ago um just before christmas i started posting my kind of best of sketches onto linkedin mm. i had like 200 followers on linkedin just yeah. my mates essentially and people that have fired me um and I wasn't, I was using, I wasn't really using LinkedIn. I was using it to kind of find jobs and network and stuff. And then yeah. I started posting my sketches and in the last month I've kind of grown to like almost 30,000 followers and uh, which I didn't even know followers was a thing on LinkedIn, but it is. And it's what's good about LinkedIn is every time someone views your page or, uh, you know, connects with me or, or follows me, I can see where they work. Mm. I can see where they've worked. I can see what brands they work for. And so it's great for network. I mean, we all know LinkedIn's great for networking, but it's it's opened up opportunities I'd never have dreamt of. I get like hundreds of messages a day of lovely people just saying how they find my content relatable. And but then, you know, there's opportunities there as well. You know, um, people want me to work with their brands and just yeah. ask me questions about TikTok and things and it's just it's exciting it's really nice well it's kind of funny i think you know it's the last few years i think linkedin is finally becoming the platform it was always meant to be it's, i don't i don't think it was ever meant to be just a place to to find a job you know it's it's ultimately this thing about you know and this is where your stuff is really funny as well is like you know it's that well we are what people and then we're professionals yeah but we're not just the same you know and yeah. i think i think there's of seeing an increase in in actual content creators on LinkedIn, you're like, you're like absolutely one of those on LinkedIn because, like, geez, you're going from 200 followers to what? 30,000. I know. I mean, that's growth. I didn't even see that growth on on TikTok, quite frankly. Mm. Um, and you know, you're right. It's it's um it's an interesting platform. It's like I I've learned how to use it as well. You know, you don't just go on there for jobs, and you know, it, it's great for that. Um, but actually, if you want, you know, if if I want, so the, one of the ways I use it is, if, let's say Emma Bridgewater, who makes these cups, these like lots, they make mugs, basically, they sell in John Lewis. Okay, yeah. I can I, if if I want to do a sketch about Emma Bridgewater mugs, okay, I I can just go on LinkedIn, type in Emma Bridgewater, find the brand team connect with them and then i can post my sketches about emma bridgewater they'll see it and then they'll reach out to me like it's yeah, just yeah. it gives you access i have absolute access to and everyone does to all these different people who you you can you don't normally get access to and um people are always want to talk about themselves so you can reach out and talk to people all the time and and it just takes confidence to do that i i have no problems with when people reach out to me 
I've spent last week, I spoke to like three people who are sort of joint, want to get into the industry and just talk to them about all of that. So it's just, just using it for networking. It's great. I love it. What kind of, what made you switch your content onto, onto LinkedIn? Cause you've got a massive like back catalog, haven't you on, on TikTok? Yeah, I've got, I've got like 1200 sketches that I've done. I'd say, let's say like 900 good ones. Um, and to be honest, I didn't want to post them too early on LinkedIn because every, t I mean, even if I look back to sketches I was doing five months ago, I'm thinking, oh God, they're terrible. But yeah. just, you just learn about, when I'm making TikToks, I learn about like sound volume and uh, green screen and effects and and just the, the pacing of, you know, it's taken me a year to kind of get all of that down and I'm always evolving and I'm, you know, improving and, and getting better. So I wanted to wait until I was had a year behind me. And then I, I started posting them I think it's because I, since I work, started working at Fleischmann, they're very supportive. This agency I work with, they know I do sketches. They don't, and they're like, just yeah, you know, just post stuff. There's no, for me, being on LinkedIn was like I'm looking for a job, kind of uh, behaviour. Mm. But it's not now, and they're they're really cool with me posting these sketches. And um, so I, I just, I just thought, you know what, this is perfect audience for it. Um, mm. I didn't really think about the algorithm. I just thought. I didn't know people would discover me. I hadn't thought that much about LinkedIn in that sense. But um, people comment all the time is, you know, I'll post, I post first thing in the morning. So it's like the first thing people will see when they wake up. And I'll, I'll post maybe three or four times a day, different sketches throughout the day. Um, and it's, I love it. It's great. And people respond to them and share them and write think pieces off the back of something that I wrote, uh, you know, that's taken me like five minutes to record. So that's amazing. I love it. Well, it's, I mean, it's that relatable side of things is, is I think, particularly great for LinkedIn, isn't it? Because yeah. you know, obviously so many people who work together, have worked together, have fired each other, you know, all sorts, you know, and, and LinkedIn is a natural place for them to tag someone going, geez, remember this moment. This is just like, you know, I think when I when I first kind of properly got into your content, it was I think there was something around the taxi ride to the pitch. Yeah, yeah. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, yeah, I know exactly who. <laughs> and and this is the thing, like I I've grown in confidence. So you know, just doing meeting room sketches or whatever back on TikTok back in the day, because I wanted to keep things open to everyone. But actually, you know. I, I the being more confident to create sketches that are very niche and very like specific to I'd never do a sketch that I hate to so people send me and I love people sending me sketch ideas but unless it's happened to me I just I am just don't do it because it's yeah, um true. I just feel like it needs to be authentically me and and the good thing is it's I just love to point out things at the every day is funny the truth is funny and um you're right you know the taxi to a pitch uh the nerves you're running late there's always you know you're in the taxi with your boss your which you may be an uncomfortable thing to be in uh how you're dressed you know have you got the usb stick have you got the boards have you got your laptop charge have you got the dongle i mean there's so many different takes you can do on that and then have should you have taken the tube should you have left earlier like this it's just everyone can relate to that i think and yeah. um you know it's it's just it, uh, just it's just about finding and also with my sketches i like to maybe put a surprise in there as well so like have a payoff so and that's the comedy and i don't always do it sometimes it's just relatable stuff but mm. my um one of my comedian friends was like yes you you haven't been doing jokes recently i was like you're right um because relatable is one thing but actually putting a joke in there or a payoff is the comedy side of it mm. um which i always try and remember to add in because otherwise it's just me going, oh, look at this. Isn't this what we all do? And but do you know what, though? One of the biggest things I've learned is uh, my, what I love is when people write, this is me. This is what I think when they write, oh, this is exactly what I do. I've never <laughs> had someone yeah. like I feel seen is another one I get quite a bit. And that's the biggest compliment because I want it to be like that. And I'll even the, the things that I that no one talks about, like, for instance, I'll give you an example. It's a bit vulgar, but um there's whenever yeah. I've worked at an agency, there's uh, there's always a toilet that you use uh, to go for a, a, a number two in. Yeah. Like yeah. There's always a toilet that people that's never on your floor that you might go to escape and have like, you know, sit on it for 20 minutes or whatever on yeah. your phone. And um, I did a sketch about that yesterday or today. I can't remember what it was now. Um, and 
yeah, you know, it's I've never had a conversation with someone about this. Um, but I thought this must be if it's something I do, then inevitably I think other people do it. Mm. Uh, and it, yeah, it has. And everyone's like, oh, my God, the Pulu. I called it the Pulu, um, which is, um, yeah, I mean. I'm familiar good. with the pen, penthouse poos. Exactly. Uh, there you go. So everyone, it, exactly that. And then there's always the client toilet by reception yeah. that no one's allowed to use. Yeah, that's there's another it. one. <laughs> I like the IT one as well. You yeah. Know, you know, the smugness of I've got my ticket or. Is oh, I haven't got my IT banter ready. Yeah, yet. No, but that's I, it. I, I sent that to a, a, a guy who's um, Jeff, who I used to work with at Habas, who's not in, in IT, and it's like Jeff, this is just absolutely bang on. You know? But it's true. You, it's like the um, so I'm I'm not like super confident at work. I, I have these. I have my anxieties are very similar to everyone's anxieties, and and that's what actually I I I, I sort of showcase those anxieties of like. You know, going around the room when you're in a meeting and introducing yourselves, or going yeah, taking the that. walk to talk, we're taking the walk to the IT to tell them your laptop's broken, and you don't, you know, they're going to ask you questions and you have no idea what they're talking about, and and you know, you don't want to look stupid, but they, you know, they're perfectly nice, and it's just those real moments, uh, and just like the nerves of interviews there's so much it's such a rich territory mm. um and you know I, that's why I, I enjoy doing it because i find it easy to do because there's so much to mine for my wor working years that i'll never run out if, if i had to sit down every morning and go what are my sketches today you know it'd be a hassle i just wouldn't but whereas i've always got a list of about 20 30 things that i want to make mm. uh, at any one time because um it needs to be if you want to make sketches you know, if you want to do it all the time and be consistent, you've got to have a, a lots of ideas to be able to keep doing it. So that's one of the, the secrets to it. Did you have a bit of a bank of like you kind of every every time you get an idea, you just I, it yeah, down I write it down. It's because from my stand up comedy years, um, I'll write down the premise in my phone and then I'll trans uh, put it onto a Google Doc and then I'll just start to think about a bit of a script. I always write a script because um it's it's quicker so if you write a script yeah. that makes you laugh then that's what you stick to if, if i because then it's quicker because then the thing that really takes the longest is me changing my outfits to be different people oh yes um, yeah because yeah. yeah. that's the thing that sort of takes the longest otherwise it's really quickly like i'll 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 write this a sketch in like i don't know six minutes i'll probably take five minutes to film it um and it might be like a 20 second sketch and then just editing it's like i do it all within the tiktok app yeah, so nice. it has green screen effect in there which i use i just all, all you need is a mobile phone and a ring light mm. um which and that's and you know i'm not a creative and i'm an account handler i'm a client servicing person so i'm not a creative person so i wouldn't be able to you know edit any i have no production skills i've learned how to have production skills with tiktok but i have no video production skills if that makes sense then what is creative as well you know it's like it's you know especially now if you think about the technology 10 years ago 15 years ago it's different but you know yeah um, and you're right and yeah. actually you know, that gives me another thing it's like you know i'm talking i you know i have empathy for the creative department but my, i'm coming from an account hand the perspective a lot of the time so i have access to client meetings that i can talk about access mm. to you know all the email banter and slack chats and then briefings and things like that so i get just from the very nature of my job i get exposed to quite a lot of the the madness in the industry what's your favorite um if you like a couple of favorite sketches a bit, a bit like choosing your favorite child you know I no i mean there are some i for me uh it's the hyper like specific ones so there's one i did quite early on which was um when you show a mood video or a creds video in a meeting so you play a video in a meeting you're stood up the front stood by the big screen yeah. and you hit you hit play you're like super pumped to show this video let's yeah. say it's a mood video uh, and it's sort of you sort of st you just stood there staring at the client when there's yeah. music playing like daft punk's playing and you're sort of nodding along and it's just i just find that hilarious just the awkwardness of like being enthusiastic, staring at the client and just sort of nodding along to this kind of creds video or whatever of work. And, you know, the client's probably fiddling on their phone and mm. you're sort of like, this is great, isn't it? And, and I don't know, I love that one. That's That did well. And um, so that one specifically I love because it's so, um, it's, if you've ever stood up there and had to show a video in a meeting, 
I think you relate to it. It's and it's and because it, for me it's a new ins it's like a new it's not an of like probably everyone knows that you know oh the horror of booking and going in you know double booking a meeting room. I don't think that's necessarily the most smart observation, but I, I really think it's a a good observation if it's you know what's it like to stand up there and play a mood video. And mm. to me it's like that's quite a good observation of mine. So I like that one. Um, other ones I've done that I like are. Uh, I like, I quite like the ones about, you know, um, it, the interview process, just highlighting some of those anxieties, um, especially on TikTok, people relate to those quite well. Um, and just, because uh, because now I'm 42, am I? I'm for, am I 42? I think I'm 42 in a few weeks there, Chris, that's why I hesitated. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I uh, and in my career, you know, I'm doing great now, but I have been made redundant. I've not passed my probation. I've, um, you know, gone client side. I've, I wouldn't say been sacked, but I've mutually left places just because the job wasn't right. I've been, you know, had a toxic boss. I've had great bosses i've had um you know all the agencies i've worked at have, have been amazing but there's some that you know just not the right fit mm. so i've got all of these i've got all of this experience but also i'm now at a point where i'm i'm not embarrassed to say that i'm 42 now like every you know to be able to stand up and say you know you know i get nervous going into meetings or um things go wrong and highlighting all that stuff i enjoy those tiktoks mm. of uh, all those sketches of um holding a real mirror up because you know i should i i want to highlight the things in the industry and not even like you know some of the toxic things in the industry as well i like this all of my sketches are a love letter to the industry but also to highlight you know what's it like to go into a brainstorm and it's for a woman's product yet there's no women in the meeting or <laughs> yeah. like diversity and things like that i'm not really done a huge amount on that stuff but you know there's there's a there's a there's a you know that i enjoy when i do and like even like working on an oil and gas client you know i've worked on tobacco brands and you know yeah. i'm a hypocrite for, but you know i'd never work on an oil and gas client so yeah, it's yeah. just highlighting all of that stuff and yeah i mean i've got loads of favorites to be honest i just my more recent stuff is better because it's mm. just um i just as i'm learning like what works and what doesn't work what music to have on the background and how to speak clearer as well i used mm. to mumble a lot and um but yeah I, I, it's it's good fun i think um i think maybe maybe this is one of the reasons why it's i think popular on linkedin as well is because it's and tiktok but i think particularly linkedin is because linkedin is so often being seen as this place as as being to present your kind of best self <laughs> you know it's you know i am great at what i do yeah there is natural for you to sort of want to say that but that kind of just being goes back to that relatable thing you mentioned is I think LinkedIn is is has is such a a place for peacocks like lots of social is you know actually to be quite very honest and open and raw about things is um is is a breath of fresh air. Yeah, and I think you're right. Like um, I mean, it's you the, the, what LinkedIn's good for is when you're not looking for a job. It's just to show that you're an authority in something. Yeah. And um, I I wanted to go on there to kind of show my TikToks because I wanted to you know I, I would say I'm a TikTok expert just purely from you know the amount sheer amount of time I've spent on it and also in my job I, I I'm always writing social media strategies and uh, finding content creators to work with for brands and um, so I, I kind of um, I was posting sketches originally to kind of just show that oh I'm an authority on TikTok I use it here you go here are some sketches and now it's almost you know I, I in fact, I'd, I'd post sketches and was looking to try and get sort of a job from it back in the day because I was freelancing. I wanted to like, you know, come into agencies and do TikTok strategies. So I, that's why I was posting them originally. But now, you know, I just I just post them without any additional think pieces or, you know, selling anything else behind it, because I think they just let them just let them do what they need to do now. Just, you know, entertain, essentially. Right. What's your what has been um what's been like the most popular sketch you've done is there anything that stands out in terms of wow you know that's like absolutely exploded yeah so on on linkedin is well, actually on both channels there was one i did about culture so it's about uh yeah. agency culture so very much about you know um 
just trying to think what it what it said now it's it's kind of just holding a bit of a mirror you know all the kind of buzzwords when we talk about culture we talk about you know there's a free bar there's you know yes. we've got a free bar on a thursday or friday we've got um i can't remember the sketch now but it was just kind of holding showing how ridiculous some of these claims are about agency culture and sometimes the reality of working late and you was know, that, can, you, can you keep the music down please exactly I'm, I'm that exactly that's a great, it's, it's, exactly oh, it the coffees aren't meant for freelancers that kind of that's the one that's the sketch exactly yeah, that and that that, yeah. that did that was the first one i posted on linkedin that got hundreds of thousands of views and i was mm. like oh i didn't even know that you know i didn't even wasn't even thinking about the number of views um and it that was that was lit i thought oh okay i'm gonna double down on this now mm. people are interested um and also you know i'm always bit i'm always very conscious i don't want to like you know i don't want people to think i'm having a go at the industry and i'm not i'm just you know it, it's it's funny because it's true um and you know it's unfortunately some of these you know some age you know, agencies got a lot better at it i think now mm. anyway but um you know there's a lot of big promises and big kind of uh, uh culture's a big thing uh, when you go to agencies and but now you know as i'm getting older culture is probably less important like show me the benefits like mm. you know uh i work for a really nice company at the minute Fleischmann hillard who are just you know it's run really well and they've, they've been going for years so they know how to treat people they know how you know they they promise they you know they promise training and they do training and um they just they're all about diversity and they actually are active at it so it's really nice to see that and um i think you know it's, even some of the sketches where i'm sort of highlighting some of the ridiculousness of it it's a lot of it's from my past yeah. you know previous years of that stuff and i think that's you know it's not all some people write yeah i hate i hate i'd never go back to work in agency and like, you're kind of missing the point of the sketch you know it's it's also what's funny is also like the extreme of it like you know so i'm you know it's i'm i'm highlighting the it's like hyperbole the extreme things that happen at work are funny as well as the mundane's funny it was really interesting what you said about about some of the serious topics that you cover albeit yeah. you know it's, you're starting from a comedy a relatable perspective actually it's and you're not having a dig at the industry but you, know, you cover some you know some quite you know quite important topics actually so i think that's great because that does get people thinking about it rather than maybe seeing the typical boilerplate content that's out there that's talking about the same subject the fact you made a sketch on it i think does get people kind of thinking about it maybe reflecting on things a bit more and i think one of the first pieces of content i think i really remember and i ended up sharing it on on linkedin it went actually it could still be one of my most popular pieces of content so thanks for that is um, is about job descriptions that was another one you're right that's it that's exactly it so it's um yeah job descriptions and just some of the terms we use and it still happens all the time just because they're you know what we think are popular terms but actually what do they what do they really mean so you mm. know it's it's almost like you know we want you to be part of the family that means that you know it's gonna be quite cliquey when you get there mm. so it's like turning the it's, that was a fun one to write because it's almost like what are the obvious things that we say in job descriptions and what really are we getting at um you know like competitive salary uh, is you know what does that even mean anymore um yeah. and, and so yeah that did really well i think that again you're right that that was something that um that shone a light on it and also another one i did was about um you know go, when you go to interviews and it's not the person you're expecting to interview you it's yeah. like i've had that happen a few times and you're like well this person doesn't really care they're not didn't know that they were interviewing me um so yeah just little things like that really you know that you can kind of highlight things that happen and i think they happen to a lot of people so you know but yeah it's i, I try and make it entertaining but you know sometimes i did one the other day and uh, i don't like you know it's very hacky to uh, suggest that strate strategists are you know really smart boring people who talk a lot but I did one about uh, how trying to escape a, me a meeting when yes. strategists are talking, because yeah. I found this amazing audio, so I thought yeah. I'd use it. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I sort of just was thinking, is this rude? Like, there's a few. But I was thinking, is, is this rude? Because I don't want to upset strategists. But then I thought, it's not really rude. It's a it's a cliche 
um but you know i'm always i am a bit sensitive to i always get to, another example of is people are like oh why don't you do a sketch about when um a new mum brings her baby into the office for the first time and everyone has to go and say oh that's really cute and i was thinking do you know what like it's probably hard enough for mums coming back from um and mums and dads coming back from parental leave and uh, maternity leave uh let alone me poking fun at them like so I'm, i am conscious i try my best to think you know and i'm sure i'm not i'm definitely not perfect with it but i do try to think a little bit sensitively especially mm. in the time we live in but at the same time you know i i i think i can stand by most of my sketches there's yeah. nothing like lurking there that is gonna get me fired so you know i've got a day job as well you know i've got to be very conscious just so people know the sketches I do if you're in a meeting with me you're not going to then see a sketch about that meeting yeah. the following week it's just not how it works um mm. unless something ridiculous happens in which case you know I might talk to you about it so I'm putting this in the sketch but like you know I've got 20 years of experience with meetings and things so you know that I've got I've got a list and list of things I want to get to before I might get to talk talk about um mm. something that's happened today and do you um do you do, do you you do them in batches yeah, yeah. so I, I have fridays off work so i i'll uh i'll film maybe eight maybe between eight and ten on a friday so i try and keep like week or two weeks in advance ahead of just you know because i i try i don't make them during the week unless there's a really kind of um itch unless i've got an itch to make one like sometimes mm -hmm. i'll wake up and i'm like if I need to make this today and I need to I need to post it today because it might be topical yeah it might you know they might all and I'll do it before work or after work um but to be honest I try to I think one of the hardest things now is getting that kind of balance of um you know I you know I'm married uh and so I don't I don't want you know I, I like to have it like i'll make fridays for making sketches i treat it i treat it like work really i'll make sketches sometimes i'm not in the mood but i'll make them you know mm. um and it's just about so at the weekend i can kind of switch off you know i might occasionally run into the spare room and get out the ring light and make a sketch but i try and keep it so because you know you can just you're just forever making there's no boundaries then you know i'm That's not 20 true. i'm not 20 i, I don't I can't, you know, I've got a life. <laughs> and you, just, and you enjoy happening. it as well, which is difficult, isn't it? Because when you enjoy doing it, you, you do need to be quite strict with yourself to say. You do, because it's, you're right. And I did a TikTok about that. You know, if you do what you love, you'll, then well, you'll yeah. never, you're never not doing, you're never not thinking about that thing. And there's mm. always a guilt of, um, oh, I could have like, you know, if I sit down and want to watch a film, I could think, I'm thinking, oh, I could have made seven sketches mm. uh, in that time. But that's gone that's beyond i'm past that now like it's you know and and also if i i have posted every day every day since i joined i posted sometimes i'll do a repost um you know something that i filmed a, you know a, a few months ago that no one saw because it didn't do very well i might change the music and repost it and it does well um but you know that's fine and if anyone points it out i'll block them um yes. <laughs> yeah. but that's the good thing with linkedin for instance you know i i'm I'm starting now to create sketches with LinkedIn in mind. So now it's given me the confidence that, you know, and actually it's made my TikToks better. You know, the more I think, okay, actually I can, I can do a TikTok now that's very, very specifically for agency people mm. that maybe it's worked, that maybe 20% of agency people may get this. Like, you know, what, how social media people in agency were ignored for like 10 years basically mm -hmm. and or the digital teams were ignored for 10 years like oh, yeah. you were you were last to present you weren't invited out for lunches you were just put in the corner of the office without the windows mm -hmm. um and uh it was a predominantly male team as well and mm -hmm. like you know so i do a sketch like that and i think oh no one's gonna like that on TikTok, but everyone's going to like that on LinkedIn, and then it gets hundreds of thousands of views on TikTok, and then it gets does really well on LinkedIn. So I'm, it's kind of I have the confidence now, just make what I think's funny or or what I like, and uh, you know whether it does well or not, it doesn't matter anymore. Like it, it kind of does in a weird way, but it's it's um, it's less important now. I suppose not having that fear of, of it might not working. It doesn't matter. You just go to the next one. You learn. And, I, and it really wasn't that long ago. You know, six months maybe a year ago that i was getting hundreds of views like just on tiktok which and i just kept making them and i just kept whereas a lot of my 
comedian friends would go on it do quite well you know you get a, you do quite well you might get a thousand views for a few and then you sort of stop and then you take a couple of weeks off and I was like you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna just keep going and uh luckily I've got a supportive wife uh she's like yeah just keep doing it and you know and I, I genuinely feel like if you just if you think something's good just keep doing it and forget about the numbers and eventually you know you'll get number one you'll get better at doing it if you're just doing it all the time and number two you'll find your audience um Sweet. and you'll just you know and also good things come from not directly from that so you know i've met an, an amazing uh, uh, uh film director called peter lyden who I've, I've done a short sketch with it's coming out um sort of a slightly longer sketch with i didn't write it but i'm starting it not starting mm -hmm. it i'm in it yeah. um and so you get to meet new great people and that's all through linkedin i've got to talk about the whole creativity and you know you say you're not a creative but you come up with very creative you know sketches and you got your your pad you know notepad where you put down your ideas um but where, where do you get your where, where do you get your best ideas so it'll be it's been what's been interesting is i've been working from home so i'm not in the office mm. so i'll I almost replay, I'll replay like my working life in my head often, just different. And I'll just think about things, you know, like the mood video. I just, with that one, you know, just the awkwardness of it. So I'll just sit down and I'll think, well, when you go into a meeting, what's, what's, what's awkward about that meeting? You know, so it's like waiting for the client to arrive. It's serving the teas and coffees. Where are they going to sit? So there you, I've already got three sketches. Then I've got, I can do a sketch about, you know, when the pastries arrive. I love doing sketches about food in meetings because it's- oh, is it? They were like pigeons. They're like pigeons. And even now, like I went to a meeting the other day and, and I was taught, we were talking for 40 minutes before I got to eat my pan au chocolat. And they're like, it's just, it's just the way it is, you know, yeah. it, it's just the way it is. So like, there's a sketch and then it's like, um, so even one scenario like a client meeting i could probably get 40 sketches out of it that like i'll just sit down and i'll just think right and i'll just i'll just write and i always write them down because you forget even yeah. if you think it's the funniest thing in the world ever and you'll remember it you there's no way you're going to forget it mm. the, the key to being a comedy writer or a comedian is we write things down that's the only difference between you and another person is that you write things down so that you can then write jokes about it. Um, everyone has funny observations, but you'll forget about them. Whereas what I do is I'll just write everything down so that I can just go in and go, right. You know, I've got one at the minute. Um, let me just have a quick, sorry. Let me just quickly have a look at what I haven't written. Um, it's a good premise, but I haven't written the, the oh, I'll tell you what it is. It's um, when you're second into the office. So you're not the first one in, but you're the second one in. Mm -hmm. So there's one other person in there. And I, I think that's funny because it's like you're in there, you're going to sort of have to say something to that person. They've probably like done the shutters. They they, they might even be in it early every day and just you wouldn't know. Mm. And it's like, do you have to turn the lights on in the office? Do you, yeah. is the Wi-Fi on? Is it cold? Like what's going on? So I'll take that idea and I'll just sit with it for a day or two. And, you know, I can just write little notes next to it. Uh, and then come Friday morning, I'll I'll sit and I'll write it out in sort of in here are my lines here are the parts and then you know the more parts i have in a in a tiktok the less i have to learn if it's just one 20 second if it's just me then i might have to learn a monologue of like 20 seconds so yeah. that's a bit harder so you know it's it's nice to introduce a few characters because i can stop and start and stop and start and just learn and pick up a couple of lines but it's brilliant you know and, and credit to tiktok they've made it easy they're, they're bringing out new filters and effects all the time mm. um and so it's it just you know on it you can always jump on trends you know if you, but if, if anyone's listening wants to just start just if you've got an idea for a tiktok even if you haven't got an idea you've got like a it might be about work it might be about whatever it might be funny it might just be not funny just start doing it you, yeah, you won't it won't do well for three four months but do it every day um or you know three times a week and you'll just immediately become an expert like you, within no time at all you'll become an expert at it and and you'll 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 find your way eventually yeah you've got to start somewhere haven't you and don't let kind of perfection get in the way of, of yeah and, 
do it. Absol- absolutely. And, you know, I've kept all my old ones up there, which are terrible because it's just, you know, they're a reminder to myself and to other people of like, you know, they like the one you talked about, um, about the job descriptions. I tell you what, like, if you watch my sketches, it's always the sunny in Philadelphia music in the background for my early ones. Okay. I always use the same music because I thought that the algorithm liked me using that music. Right. Uh, and, and I thought that that would be my thing. Uh, but actually, it's quite loud and you can't always hear what I'm saying with it on. So you just things like that you learn and then you can learn to have music add to the drama of the the storytelling so yeah. it's great you know and i'm learning all of that as i said i'm no uh you know prodigy of like film content and sketch writing so i'm le- i'm still figuring it all out but it's it's opening doors for me like it's you know lots of brands are talking to me i'm not i don't want to use the word an influencer but i get sent some great jumpers from my favorite brand rowing blazer who you yeah, see me wear stuff. all the time yeah. but i you know i spent a fortune with them and now they send me stuff so i've earned that yeah. to be honest um but it's open doors i meet like the film director peter Lydon. i'm talking to TikTok about maybe doing some stuff in Cannes this year oh, that's um, cool. wow. uh, yeah. but you know whether that will happen i'm not sure and like it's it's just exciting time to yeah. be honest chris and that's a credit to TikTok and a credit to linkedin and yeah you know people for following me it's really good of them well thanks for yeah thanks for brightening up linkedin it's um i think a lot of people who um who look forward to seeing it you know myself included and also you get credit actually because i remember you posted um you did post some some linkedin some of my sketches on linkedin before i did perfectly fine i think you even asked for my permission which is good like just and and um i was like oh they're they've done quite well I think um like I wouldn't I didn't I hadn't thought of doing that at that point so I think you helped give me the confidence to do that so you get a little bit of credit for that no, um sure. and uh, yeah thank you for being very supportive from from uh, very early days it's been it's been great and um yeah uh, you know watch this space I don't know what's gonna happen I've still got a day job um and I still love working in the industry uh and you know because it feeds you know it's all connected in a weird way Mm. you know my i'm a head of influence and social so it's kind of being on tiktok a lot is uh, is it helps with my day job so i'm quite fortunate for that well thanks very much enjoy the rest of your uh your friday and thank you very um, much yeah well um i look forward to seeing the next sketch thanks chris appreciate it thanks mate bye bye Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed the chat. If you did, feel free to subscribe to get future episodes and please do share the podcast with others. It really does make a difference.